What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. My name is John Huynh, and welcome back to another slice of my life. Today, we're gonna be going over my trip to SoCal a couple weeks ago, and this is gonna be going back to Wednesday, September 20th of 2023. So pretty much, me and my friend Alan decided to go to Southern California for the week. It was my cousin Mickey's birthday, and I asked Alan, hey, since we're down there, would you like to go to Disneyland while we're there? making can get us in and then he has two more days uh on his pass before end of this year expires so it was a good opportunity for us to go explore southern california as well as use more disneyland excuses to go um but anyways this is going to be going over my very first day in southern california ali and i had gotten there early in the morning around like one in the morning something like that and we went to bed, woke up early, and we decided to have an early start. Um, as you can see, uh, the vlog is going to kick up after this. So let's go ahead and transition over the vlog because I'm sure you guys are dying to see what's going on and what we did during that day, and I want to spoil it too much for the intro. So we've heard a lot about Davian Coffee, and I've never been here personally, but I've been dying to try it out. So me and Alan decided to stick our heads in and see what this place is all about. I really like the decor in here. Everything is really clean and sleek. This would definitely be a really good spot to do some homework or do some work. And their coffee looks really, really good. Really aesthetically pleasing. All right, what's up everyone? It's the first day here in SoCal. Me and Alan got here last night around midnight and we're checking out uh, a coffee place here called Davian on Bolsa Avenue. Today we have a Ube coffee as well as a Davian special right here. So it's a Vietnamese coffee shop. And uh, I heard a lot of really nice things about it. I did know there's two locations, this one here in Westminster and this one in Garden Grove. And uh, I want to compare to see how good this Ube coffee is compared to uh, Air Aroma, which is my current favorite spot to get Vietnamese coffee, uh, Ube flavor. So let's go ahead and check it out. Actually, that's really good. Um, the ube cream on top has a very strong coconut flavor. It is a little bit hard to drink uh, because it's a little bit thick. I couldn't get any of the coffee, but the cream itself is really good. We'll go ahead and mix it up and then try it with uh, everything mixed together. Okay, so first off the bat, I would say the coffee is a lot stronger here than it is at Aroma. Aroma has a lighter roast, which is perfect for me because I'm not a huge coffee drinker. I mean, when it comes to coffee, I really like drinking something that has a lot of flavor. I like a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of cream to it. Uh, here, the coffee is stronger than Aroma. However, it is not too, too strong where you get hit in the face by uh, that traditional coffee, Vietnamese coffee uh, flavor. Ube, fantastic. It works super well with the coffee. Coffee doesn't overpower the ube and the ube and the coconut flavor doesn't overpower the coffee, which is really, really good. And yeah, I definitely see why uh, everyone talks about this place a lot. Fantastic. I really like this. I think this is probably going to be my new go-to place to get uh, ube coffee. It has the perfect amount of coffee flavor to it and a really strong uh, ube cream to it. So yeah. All right. Cheers. 
After the video shoot, we went ahead and did some work, editing content before we got the week started as we, were, we knew we were going to get too busy. After we wrapped up with editing, we headed over to Torrance. Alan's never been to Torrance and there's tons of really good Japanese seafood here so I knew I had to take him here. Our first stop takes us to Tendon Tempura by Carlos Jr. and Alan's never been here so it's perfect. I've never mentioned this before but if you ever come here, make sure you grab these bowls with these pickled celery and the pickled ginger because these are really good side dishes that accompany your tempura very very well. Like, uh, yeah. like, like one that's like filmed the out the background, oh. but then there's one that I had up here. So I don't think that would work out. Let's pull closer to you. So, like, it's, it's a moving focus. So this is just some BTS I captured showing you guys what I was doing, helping out Alan, posing and kind of getting the right angle for him and how it makes him happy to shoot content for a trip. All right, what's up guys? We're here in Torrance today. This is our second stop for today. Uh, we had coffee at Davin in the morning and now we're here in Torrance checking out Carlos Jr. If you guys don't know, it is a tempura spot and we have their special tempura plate here today with a couple of different things and we also added some a la carte stuff as well just because it wasn't in the special tempura plates and we want to try more things. Now if you don't know, the chef is a Peruvian uh, guy and he went to Japan and learned from a tempura master and then he brought the concept back here and opened up a store here in Torrance. Now Torrance is a relatively small city but has a lot of really good Japanese food and this is definitely one of those that highlights how awesome Japanese cuisine is out here. So let's go ahead and talk about the special tempura plate uh, today. So it comes with a pumpkin. Now that is fried to perfection. The batter here is insanely amazing. It is light yet really crispy and it doesn't hit you too hard and when you leave after the end of the meal you feel really good not bloated not stuffed doesn't taste too oily either which i really like so we got that and then it comes with a piece of nori now highly underrated this is one of my favorite things about the uh, plates comes with the shishito pepper right here and of course white fish it's like a little piece of filet right here and um comes with the kakiage as well, which is a squid and scallop mixture that's tempura fried. And lastly, we have a little shrimp. And on the side, we ordered a extra eel. It doesn't come with it, but just check out how long this piece of eel is. Whole eel, but yeah. And then your meal comes with a rice set and it comes with this nice egg that's poached. Um, we're not poached, but fried and then it's still runny in the middle and you just kind of mix it in your rice and miso soup basic so let's go ahead and mix this sauce up so this is their dipping sauce and it comes with a ball of radish and as soon as you mix it in here it kind of just dissolves check that out and then you take this and you dip it I'll take this so, so, so this is gonna be their tempura shrimp. All right, let's eat. Okay, I already have my shrimp, so that's your shrimp. Yeah, that's why I just dip one piece. I'm just going to eat half the pepper. It's not spicy. What? I have some of this rice. I'm going to break this. How's the eel? Oh, that's the white fish? Oh, 
What do you think? Good light. It's light, right? It's good batter, not oily. I always enjoy the operations, but you know, New York, New London. I'm like, okay. Don't worry. But then my ex, we always judge places by their uh, basic uh, dishes. Sake mat. Well, salmon. The basic. She would judge everybody by the basic one. So they can't do that one, like, good. Like, it's like. You can't trust them with anything else. Uh, it's up she didn't like it when, you know, when they do uh, the period. A lot of them, they, by default, they put uh, wasabi. Oh, right. Like, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. she didn't like that. But I was like, this is fine. She didn't like it. It's not supposed to like like they put a little bit just to enhance the flavor. And it helps like you know, kind of thick, you know. Mm -hmm. like, you like oh, oh yeah, have the radish. Celery is so good. I could literally eat this all day. It's like the pickle things you always want to have. Yeah. It's, it's like, like sweet. Like Vietnamese has like the pickle daikon radish. Uh huh. Like it goes good to everything. Like you just put on rice or whatever, everything. Where's there you I don't need the filling though. It feels very light. I told you. You know sometimes like you know other deep fat places like hella they feel like batter. That's some of the rice. I had the angle you're mixing it for above. It's good. Oh, oh we lost it. Yours. You want that? I had mine. Oh, you did? I got two. Uh, You're a white fish. I think the white fish has a little bit too batter, too much batter today. It's a little bit hard. You'll see. Too hard. Down here. Yeah. And this is the maitake mushroom. Oh, see fish right here. See yep. Mmm. It's like a light snack. All right, that's yours. The mushroom really hit. All right, what's up everyone? We're here at our third stop in Torrance and we're checking out Pato Mano. It is a pasta shop owned by a husband and wife duo. We have Marco here who's cooking and he's actually doing front of the house because his wife works later in the evening. But um, we're here checking out some of his pasta. He makes everything in-house here. Everything is authentic to Italian cuisine from his hometown. And uh, the first thing we have here is gonna be his pesto and this packery style uh, noodles. It's a tube shape, it's a little bit bigger than uh, your average tube shaped noodle. So this is really good. I had this last time and uh, I'm excited to try it again. And then second, we have the bolognese sauce with it, and he recommended the fettuccine right here. So this is my first time trying it out. And uh, yeah, I really like bolognese, so I'm gonna check it out. Oh, and look, we have uh, Marco right here. Check it out. Ooh. 
fancy. I like your technique, Marco. <laughs> Ready? Ready. That's how you do it. Mmm, grazie. Delicious. Alright, you guys saw it first. Look at that. Okay, the bolognese, really flavorful. I really like how meaty that sauce is, but it's not overpowering. And the noodle, al dente, it's got a nice chew to it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and eat. Compliments of Marco, the man, the myth, the legend. So we're here at Casa Sando in Chinatown just to pick up a couple sandwiches to snack on when we get to Griffith Observatory tonight. So yeah, we're just checking it out. I picked up the egg sando from the cold section as I remember this being really good and we also picked up their chicken katsu as well. We're finally here on top of Griffith Observatory and we got front row parking which is really nice and there it is, the Hollywood sign. And we completely really lucked out too because the museum inside was actually open today. I've been so many times before and they've always been closed. But if you're really into astronomy and space stuff like that, NASA, this is a really good place to learn a lot about a lot of things. Things that are beyond my comprehension. But uh, it's a really nice um, museum. Most of it is free. I think the only thing that charges is the astronomy show. Uh, and they have one every hour or something like that and you can pre-purchase the tickets inside but there's a lot of history here about everything that you can think of in terms of astronomy and stuff like that and uh, yeah Alright, so the moment I've been waiting for and the only reason why I'm here is for this spectacular view. Um, me and Alan are going to set up here and poach here until sunset just so we can check out and see the change. And uh, yeah, I saw this free telescope viewing of these sunspots which is really cool. And I'm just counting out a couple places to see where is the best spot to see the city. And it looks kind of smoggy so tonight might not be the best view but we're going to make it work. And even over here in the front, it's super beautiful. There goes the Hollywood sign again. So now we're gonna go ahead and begin my time lapse and I just want you guys to really enjoy this. I moved my angle just a little bit, but I really like seeing all the people going in, back and forth against the wall, seeing the beautiful view of the city. It's kind of crazy how in the naked eye you don't really see as much activity, or at least I can't because my eyes are so bad, but... Having the camera zoomed in and seeing how many cars driving down the street makes me realize how little I am in this vast world.
we're just about ready to wrap up and leave and head over to see our friend Jack from Ghost Sticks. But uh, I found this really nice perched spot right here and it has the perfect angle of the entire city. And I was like, hey, we should do another time lapse here. So I was like, oh, seriously? Okay. So I ended up staying here and made another time lapse. And that's a wrap of our Griffith Observatory at Night Adventure. <laughs> Alright, so that's going to be a wrap of my first day in Southern California with Alan. And pretty much we had a really chill day. I really, really am super glad that I was able to chillax a bit and do the things that I really wanted to do before the weekend was upon us, especially because we got there super early in the week. Got there, uh, we left Tuesday night and got there Wednesday. So it was a really, really good time for me and Alan to really have a very slow start and slower pace to begin our weekend in Southern California as it quickly ramps up uh, starting Friday when we go to Disneyland and of course going to Mickey's birthday on Saturday and then San Diego on Sunday and then kind of winding it back down as we prepare to leave Monday night. So thank you so much for everyone for joining me on my first day back in Southern California. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing everything that we ate, everything that we did. I knew that I had to go back to Griffith Observatory. I've been meaning to go back for the past couple trips, but I didn't have time or the times that I did try, they were closed or the road was blocked. So it was too much effort to really go. So. The fact that I got a chance to go back to Griffith was really, really good and I'm really glad that I dedicated like uh, two-fourths of the day at Griffith, so that was really, really fun. But anyways, I'll catch you guys next week as I showcase what we did on day two, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye!